Hey everyone, let's look at today how we can make a custom JSON endpoint that returns the URL path for any specific ID uh, of a page within a Zesty site. So this is the ultimate endpoint here where we're giving it the ZID of 542 and that returns the ID printed out and the URL that or the URL path that matches that endpoint. Um, I think 501 is the home page and 503 is the blog page. So you can see, you know, you continue to just throw up whatever uh, ZIDs you have from maybe other endpoints or other usage and you can get the URL path back um, as a JSON object. So this is the code of how we get, got here, but let's write it together so you know what's going on. All right. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to add a new JSON AJAX file. So with uh, any AJAX files, these come with their own custom endpoint, and I'll show you how to access that. Um, and so HTML can be, you know, uh, anything from a full page where you're writing out the doc type and the head and the body to, you know, just a snippet that you're going to be accessing somewhere. Whereas JSON is specifically formatted for using those JSON uh, objects. So this will be something uh, I had called it URL from ID, but uh, let's reverse that. ID to URL. How about that? Great. So um, all right, and content. So let's see how that looks and how we can access that. So now I have my new JSON endpoint and it has content in it. So to access any custom um, endpoint that you make for HTML or JSON, you want to do the dash forward slash custom forward slash uh, whatever the name is that you gave that file. So ID to URL. Um, and then dot whatever type of form, uh, AJAX file that is. So either dot HTML or in our case dot JSON. Great. So here's exactly what we were expecting. Our content um, hello world printout. But that's not super relevant. What we actually want to get is a URL. And we want to get a dynamic URL. And so within Zesty you uh, can use a parsely called, called, called true path. And true path will take any ZID and return with the path to that uh, to the page that's represented by that ZID. So, like I said earlier, 501 is going to be your home page most of the time. Uh, you save that, and how we, here we have URL, you know, just your base forward slash. So, if you wanted this to line up with your full domain, you could do you know, whatever you want as your Com. Save that. Or if you just wanted the path, that way it can be you know used consistently in different testing environments. Uh, you don't need that at all. But what we really want is for this to be dynamic. And for that to happen, we're going to be calling from the uh, query parameters in the URL. So to do that in Parsley, you want to use git underscore var and dot so a get variable and then dot whatever comes after the dot is what you want to use as your use as your key and then parsley will print out the value so here we're going to use uh, id as our key and so in the url we want to use uh, question mark id equals and here we want to give it the the number for the the zid that we're looking for great so that worked exactly like we wanted it to um, and now you know we can test some of our other ZIDs and make sure we're getting back the path that we're looking for. Um, so there are a few other things that I had written, um, if you remember, at my at the start. So one of them is I'm also printing out the uh, ID, which is a bit redundant since it's also in the the URL path itself. But I wanted to show you that 
you know, just in a really basic sense, uh, what the get bar ID is doing, um, and this keeps it really visible for that. Um, so here you get five or three. Uh, print it out. So whatever it goes in here, that's what we'll print out. So I could even type, you know, hello world. And it will print out there. Hello world obviously isn't a ZID, so it just defaults to the home page there. So the other thing we want to do is we want to make sure that we have an ID to work with in the first place. So let's do an if get var ID. So that if will make sure that the value for the get var ID is not null. Uh, so if it has value, it will print this out. And if it doesn't, then it won't print out anything. So if we just load this endpoint now, we get nothing. And so we need to have ID equals 503 to get our, our printout. All right, so pretty straightforward. Um, we'll look at the code again. I'll zoom in here. Uh, to make sure you can get a good look at it, but it's primarily just using this true path. Um, you know, the naming conventions of all of these are totally up to you. You don't have to use this file name, you don't have to use this parameter name, you don't have to use this um, JSON name. Um, it's just what I happened to, to use this time. All right. Thanks.